is positioned for power. Positioned for power. And you probably be thinking that what what a title. I want to read briefly from the book of First uh, King, verse, uh, chapter twenty. First King, chapter twenty. You see, the Lord gives power to the weak. When I sent the text, I sent out last yesterday. I sent text out every Saturday, and uh, this one that I sent out this last uh, that was Saturday yesterday. It's from the book of Isaiah 40, verse 29. New King James Version says, He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. The Bible doesn't say he gives power to the strong. There's a condition that will set you ready for his power. Then the comment, the comment is, uh, the condition for divine strength is the acceptance of natural weakness. For the word says, let not the strong man boast in his strength. For when I am weak, I am strong. Are you weak, tired, and weary today? Be not discouraged, for there lies your strength. If the acknowledgement, see, that's, that is why I I picked that first third chapter as a standard of the song. Thou knowest, Lord, how very weak I am, and how I fear to stray. For strength to serve, I look to thee alone. The strength thou must supply. If, that, if it doesn't supply me strength, I remain weak. If it will not break through for me, I remain there. It is by grace that I'm standing today, not by my understanding, wisdom, or knowledge. And so, looking at the, uh, the uh, first Kings chapter 20, Ben Hadad, king of Aram, gathered all his army, and 32 kings were with him. You know, king is over a kingdom. So, 32 kingdoms united together with King Ben Hadad, making 33 kingdoms. Against one nation. Uh, he went up and laid siege against Samaria and fought with it. He sent messenger to the city of Ahab, king of Israel. He said to him, Thus says Ben Hadad, Your silver and your gold are mine. And your women and young best sons are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, As your word, my master the king, I am yours. And all that is mine is yours. The messenger turned and said, Thus says Ben Hadad, saying, I sent you. I sent to you saying, your silver and gold are mine. And your women and your best sons, you must give to me. So at this time tomorrow, I will send my servant to you that they might search your house and the houses of your servants. All the desire of your eyes, they will lay hands on and take it away. A king Surrounded with 32 kings, is sending the message to one king. Hmm. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Please know and realize that this man is seeking trouble. For he sent to me for my women, my sons, my silver, my gold, and I did not withhold anything from him. All the elders and all the people said to him, Do not listen and do not consent. So he said to the messengers of Ben Hadad, Say to my lord the king, All that you demanded from your servant at the first I will do. But this thing I am not able to do. Then the 
messenger a report to him. Then Ben Hadad sent to him and said, Thus may the gods, small g, do to me, and thus may they add if the dust of Samaria is sufficient for the hollow of a hand for all the people who are at my feet. The king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let him who guards on his armor boast, let not him who guards his armor boast as one who takes off his armor. It happened at the moment he had these words, he and the kings were drinking in the tents. He said to his servant, get ready to attack. So they got ready to attack the city. Suddenly, a certain prophet approached Ahab, king of Israel, and said, Thus says Yahweh, Have you seen all the great crowd before the great crowd? Behold, I am giving it into your hand today, that you may know that I am Yahweh. Ahab said, By whom? And he said, Thus says Yahweh, by the servants of the commanders of the prophets. Provinces. He said, who will begin the battle? And he said, you. So he mustered the servants of the commanders of the provinces, and there were 232. After that, he mustered all the army, and the sons of Israel, 7,000. They went out at noon, while Ben Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the tent, he and the 32 kings helping him. Then the servants of the commanders of the province went out first, and Ben Hadad sent, and they reported to him, saying, Men have come out of Samaria. Then he said, If they have come out for peace, them alive. If they have come out for war, seize them alive. But these had come out from the city, seventh commander, and the army that was after them, each man killed his men. And the Arameans fled, so Israel pursued them, but King Hadad, king of Aram, escaped on a horse with Calvary. The king of Israel went out, attacked, the horses and the chariots and defeated a realm with a great blow. May the Lord bless the hearing and the reading of his word. He was frightful. He was he was uh, frightened trembling he surrendered all this silver, all this treasure, all this his wives and all this, this the best of the songs. You see us take it. But a time came in your weakness that you feel some fire deep within you. And your eyes start to open from the cloud that the enemy has set over it. And you can start to think in your mind, say, no, 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 I can, I can, I can. Number one, I want to employ everybody, stop being negative about yourself. Never. There's nothing that can happen to man that is greater than the power of God. For he that boasts, let him not boast about himself. He would crumble the wisdom of the wise. That's only one thing that lasts forever. He said wisdom is better than the, the, the weapon of war. It's not the wisdom of how you just could not, just think things out. Holy Spirit, endure, endure me with your wisdom. The one that comes from above is first pure. See, he said to, in 1 Kings uh, 1846, and the Lord gave special strength to Elijah so that he was able to run ahead of Ahab's chariot. He beat the one on the chariot to the finishing point, the city of, the, to the gates of the city of Jezreel. He called on, the, on King Ahab when after he sent his messengers five times. Those that know they are God, they will be strong and do exploit. The strength may not be physical. 
the strength, his ability to stay focused and never to deflect, not to dissuade, not to be persuaded, not to waver from that which you know. For faith is not something you feel or see. It's faith, it's, faith is what comes from within that you know. I know that I know. He said, go the second time. Go back the third time. I can hear the sound of rain. I can see the flood of rain. I say, go back the third time. Go back the fourth time. Go back the fifth time. The sixth time. The seventh time. I only saw like a finger. I said, tell Ahab, if you don't run fast, the rain will flood you on the way. Ahab already set up going about 60 miles. And he just took his clock and tucked it in his garden. And phew, supernatural strength. He outran the chariot. See the commentary on that. Divinely directed, divinely up, divinely directed, and divinely upheld Elijah, instead of resting, ran in advance of the king's chariots the entire distance of at least 16 miles to the entrance of Jezreel, he must show himself ready to countenance and uphold the irres irresolute monarch, and he will turn from his evil way and um, evil causes and proceed to carry out the religious reformation. He showed it to Ahab that Ahab can catch something and awake from his slumber and face his religious duty. But eh, did Ahab further really do that? Is that what they say? He did. Pray for strength that comes only from God. Paul prays for the people in Ephesus because he saw something about them already. I said, ever since I heard about, there's a desire to pursue some things of God. And ever since I heard about your, your, your good work, I never stopped praying for you. Ephesians 6, uh, 3, 16. And he said, I pray that out of, the, the, out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Now when we talk about this power, it's not just power to make you zoom like, uh, like lightning, like uh, Batman, or, 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 you know, it Philip, Philip, the grace, and Philip just just disappeared and appeared in, 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 somewhere in Africa to meet the Ethiopian eunuch on the way, and he ministered to him. And by the time he ministered, he was able to convert him. He took him through baptism. He just disappeared, just like what, like Superman. That's not just the power we're talking about. He will give you power to resist sin. It's power, power to to face opposition and to be able to stand. And there are some people when they get into a see the house, I, I listened to a lot of argument this last two, three, four, five weeks. Okay, I know my wife said, don't be talking, to, talking about me in your preaching, but you see, I, I saw my wife argue with one particular man, so very much about politics, and I said, I, I don't have, I, I won't do that. It's not the power to, to convince. It's the power to demonstrate the love of God. No, no, no. It's nothing wrong with my wife. All of you all argue. You, you, everybody argue. <laughs> Sometimes, a lot of times, I decide. I just force myself not to get into because when you start to take it, I say, no, it's not, it's not worth it. And just let, Nobody is giving me $10 billion. If, either way, that comes into power, right? But the Bible says, pray for the peace of the city. And that is all, that's what we are mandated to do. God will strengthen his people for every service to which his commandments and providence has called them. He won't call you and leave you to hang and dry. He will equip you. When you are weak, he sees you ahead of time. He knows what you need just before you snap. He will just set it in just at the very time that you need it. That's why they say he's the very present help in time of need. He knows you're going through struggle. He knows you're about to snap because they have, they're about to press your last. What now? And when they hit, he knows how to take you through to the world. Or just seek him. He said, this, what do you have to do? He said to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart. But you shall be careful. You shall meditate upon the day and night. So you be careful to do all that is written therein. So, once you do that, 
you'll be successful. And Satan did not tell you, be strong. Be strong and be courageous. So strength here is ability to stay focused. Never to mingle with their fears of the world so you can, you, you, you can satisfy the one that called you, that enlisted you into the army. Ability to stay focused. Ability to shun evil. Ability not to mingle. Ability to be separated. That is strength that comes from within. It's not the physical macho and that might be part of it too. Second Chronicles 16, 7 to 9. At that time, Hanani, the seer, came to King Asa of Judah and told him, Because you have relied on the king of Aram and not on the Lord your God, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. The story here was tro so trouble. And just as kings, they compromise. There's a way you compromise so much that you derail from your course. He compromised and he called for them to come quickly and, hey, come help me. And, and, and the Lord now told him, he said, oh, you just messed up. May you never mess up. So, so what is what he said? He said, we are not the Gushites, the Cushites, the Libyans. A vast army with many chariots and horsemen. Yet, because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. Now, how come you forgot? Reliance is one key that will lead you to supernatural power of God. Reliance on who you should rely on. He said, because you rely on God, he delivered the Gushites and the Libyans, a vast army with more chariots, he delivered them into your hand. Now you will now, because of this little one, you run to man for safety. You missed it. Because those ones that you just called, I was to give them to you. But you will never be able to win them now, since you saw them at your, as your Lord. There is danger when we misplace priority. And we, 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 we accord to man that which is said for God. In our own mind, we have elevated man to the position of God. So man will give to you what man can give, but you can't get that from God since you already sought it from the heart of a man. That's what he was saying to Asa here in 2 Chronicles 6, 7, 6, 7 to 9. For this is what it says. For the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro over the earth. To show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are fully devoted to him. You have acted foolishly, King Asa, in this manner. From now on, therefore, you will be at war. See the consequence. Who do you rely on when things become so tough? Check that person. It's contesting to be your God. Not him. You are elevating him to sit parallel with God in your heart. It becomes a hidden idol. And that need to go. Well, am I just, am I doing okay not to... For the eye of the Lord roams to and fro the entire earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are fully devoted to him. And he said, you have acted foolishly for seeking help from the king of Aram, the Aram that I intend to give to you for slave. Now you will never be able to capture them. And they said that for the eye of the Lord roams to and fro to make himself strong on behalf of those that are devoted whom mind are straight to him. So, and I look at different other ways. To those who are committed to him. The eye of the Lord runneth to and fro. To see those that are loyal to him. To see those that are fully devoted to him. To see those who rely and are focused on him. So that is the condition for power. Are you loyal? Are you committed? Are you transparent? 
Are you desiring to see him? Are you like a deer that pants for the river so your soul longs after him? If that is who you are, man cannot see to judge. It's you and God. It's who you are in the secret that will show you who, how he will respond to you in the public. Are you focused on God? Are you committed? Do you have any other, or do you have alternate B? Second, in case this one fail. Do you have that? Check it. That's an idol. It's hidden. It does not matter how much you smile, how much you say, Jesus, I love him. He knows who love him. He knows. I'm telling you, God, I pray that whatever will shake my faith to the point that I will turn my back may it not happen to me. I'm praying. Isaiah 40, verse 28. This is a series of questions. Do you know? Have you not heard? No, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God. The creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond searching out. He gives power to the faint. He increases the strength of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and the young men stumble and fall. But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I'm going to pull a couple of things out of here. You must be in the place to receive his strength. Are you strong in the physical? And you storm so much you don't need his strength. He gives strength to the weak. The first condition calls for a lack of something that you seek, that calls you to seek him. Let the weak say I am strong. Not that let the strong say I am strong. You got to be weak. You got to be vulnerable. You don't need to plaster and cover yourself and you know package. You know, you know, you know, you know, and and I expect to be. And you are weak inside, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I need you. Oh, I need you. That's the mentality. It's because I don't have that I seek. It's because I'm hungry that I'm cloaking for him to feed me. It's because I'm thirsty that I'm looking for the water that will never run dry. But if I'm full, I don't need him. He gives power to the faint and increases the strength of the weak. Now, this, uh, let, me, if, 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 let me read the commentary of this verse 30. The verse said, even youth and weary and the young men stumble and fall. In any society, who are the strongest? The youth and the young men. He didn't pick someone like me to show us an example of even Pastor John Grover. I'm always like, I'm always this. It's not even those the young one. The, 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 1924, the youth, and the 2435 young men. This has this. This is the strength of any nation. They grow weary and they stumble. But those like me, the weak one now, and the weak one. If you can wait upon the Lord, He will endure you with power. That's what we are saying. So look at the see at the commentary. It says here, even the youth shall faint. The most vigorous men. Those in whom we expect manly strength and who are best suited to endure hardy toil. They become weary by labor. Their power are soon exhausted. The design here is to contrast the most vigorous of the human race with God and to show that while all their powers fail, the power of God is unexhausted, inexhaustible. And the young men, the word used here denotes properly those who are chosen or selected. And may be applied to those who are selected or chosen for a hazardous enterprise. 
or dangerous achievement in world. Those who will be selected for vigor or activity, the meaning is the most chosen or select of human family, the most vigorous and manly must be worn down by fatigue or paralyzed by sickness or death. But that the powers of God never grow weary and that those who trust in him should never become faint. See, it is not me boasting of my physical power. It is me realizing that I am weak. The verse says, verse 3 says, Thou knowest, Lord, how very weak I am and how I fear to stray. For strength to serve, I look to thee alone. The strength thou must supply. That is when in my weakness, when I run to him, I'm positioned for power. Reliance on him. The ability to wait on him. To trust him alone. To be devoted to him. And to read the word. By, he said to Joshua, this book of the Lord shall not depart. If you read the word and you rely on him and you trust him alone and you decide to wait, you are patient on You are positioned for power. This is what Jeremiah 9.23, this is what the Lord says, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. It will, it will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Nor the strong man in his strength, he will crumble. Even the young men, the youth and the young men, they crumble. I just, we just read that. Nor the wealthy man in his riches, what did he say to one that created a dismantle the first man and build a big barn and loaded it up. Let my soul eat and drink for many years. He said, you fool. But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me and that I am the Lord who exercises loving devotion, justice and righteousness on the earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. Will I pull back again now and just say, I love you? Because you love me so much. As I close, blessed is the man that, that maketh the Lord his trust and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. This is a charge. I saw this in there. During the course of my studies. You can't have the best of anything that you have not invested your best in. You can't have the best of God until you invest your best into him. What's your best? Deal in his word. Dwell in his word. Dig deep into it. Desire him. Just as the deer pants for the river. Wait upon him. Don't jump before him. Don't go without, without seeing telling you. Trust him. Be devoted. Be loyal. In the name of Jesus. That's when you position yourself for the supernatural. If you seek me, you will find me. Is that not what he said? If you seek me with all your heart. Don't stay on, the, on your edge. And don't relax for nothing. You are still in a battle. You are still a work in progress. You are still being fed. You are still being made. It is not over yet. Until he said, don't take a comma for full stop. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. There's a part he has set for you. And the part that no man can take away from you. He said that, hey, mother, mother, you worry about too many things. Mary has chosen the right one. Nothing can, nobody can take that from me, from her. What was it that Mary was seeking? He sat at the feet of Christ. And he was sinking every word that was coming from the mouth of him. And he was being strengthened by the word. Because thy word strengthened me. I would have given up, if not for your word. Thy word strengthens me. The word. Dig into it. You never can have enough of that. Be patient with God. If you say, wait, wait. Trust him. Be loyal. Be devoted. Seek him. Long, long for him. Keep the word. That's a guy that, uh, that just came out of jail and they, they assigned him to me to, to mentor. And then when, after we we were introduced to one another. When I called him, he said, Hey, keep the bread fresh. 
the bread of life. Keep it fresh. How do you keep it fresh? By, by visiting it often and of, often and again. If you leave it for too long, I have a bread now that the artisan bread, I just slice it two days ago. Yeah, I had you. I slice it, I put it on the counter. It's as hard as a rock now. It's no more fresh. <laughs> Keep the word fresh. If you let it hang, it will gather dust. It will be hard. You won't know where to start. Keep it fresh. And God will help you as you do. In Jesus.